the seerah of the Prophet If we look to, way, to the way the Sahaba were with the Prophet it used to impress people so much. One man said, he said, I have seen, I've been to the court of Caesar. And I've been to the court of the Persian emperor. I have seen rulers, but I have never seen people respect someone as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was respected by his companions. And this moved him and impressed him so much. And the generosity of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was overwhelming. He used to give and give and give. He used to give as if there was no such thing as poverty. He would give as if there was no such thing as poverty. One day a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked the Prophet for something. The Prophet said to him, you see this valley? Of sheep, there was a whole hillside filled with sheep. He said, it's all yours, take it. The man went back to his people. He said, oh my people, embrace Islam. Because Muhammad gives, and Muhammad gives as if there is no poverty. Actions speak louder than words. We see how Muslims showed the example of justice. There is the famous story, how Amr, the general who opened Egypt, struck an Egyptian copt with his whip. Because he was in the way, he was riding on his horse, and it, uh, he's just a Christian. He whipped him out of the way. But this man, he knew and heard about the justice of Umar. So he traveled from Egypt to Mecca to seek an audience with Amir al-Mu'mineen. And he himself stood in front of Umar. Subhanallah. An Egyptian peasant standing in front of the ruler of the whole of the Muslims. And complained to him about his treatment of his general. And Umar happened to be there at the time. Making tawaf. And Umar ibn al-Khattab -Al called him. He said, is it true what this man says? Umar looked at him, yes, it's true, so what? Umar took his stick, he gave it to this Egyptian Christian, he said, hit him as he hit you. The man said, no, mas uh, no Amir al-Mu'mineen. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Actions speak louder than words, brothers and sisters. This is what we mean. And I am just selecting a few examples. Islam is full of examples. We know that Islam was spread. In the countries where Islam is today, most of Islam was not spread by conquest. Most of it was spread by example. Yes, by dawah, some by preaching, but mostly people saw these Muslims, saw the way they behaved. They arrived as traders. And how did they trade? Like us today? Cheating, stealing, see how much we can rip them off. As one brother said, he's going to give me a hard time for this, but I can't resist it. As one brother said, he want, he, his job is to fix things. I won't say what, might give it away. His job is to fix things. What did he do? Put out the plug, put it in, $120 please. I mean, it's the normal rate, fair enough. Okay? But, <laughs> okay. It's not the type of thing that spreads Islam, right? Seriously. Look at the traders. If you look at them, their action, their behavior, their honesty, their truthfulness, their trustworthiness. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, this is the thing. And there was enough. The people didn't need to hear, what is your religion? They said, I want to follow your religion. I want to follow your religion. I tell you an example from my own life where actions spoke louder than words. I could give you many examples, many examples. I remember my cook, when I used to live in Egypt, I remember my cook Ibrahim, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him. I used to see he was the kindest, sweetest man, subhanAllah. And being Easter, it's quite appropriate, this story, okay? At the time, it was very difficult to get Western things in Egypt. 
when I lived there. And my mum had bought these Swiss chocolate Easter eggs. And there were all these little Easter eggs and she put them in this big basket in the kitchen. Big mistake. Okay. And she put them in the basket near the door. And me and my brother, me and my brother, of course, you know, we'd just take one and think, yeah, it wouldn't make any difference. And we'd take one. You know, and like, just before Easter arrived, there was like two left. <laughs> we had totally demolished them. I don't know how my mum didn't see it, but one day she came in and said, where are all my Easter eggs? Anthony, did you do it? No. It wasn't me. Duncan, did you do it? No. So my mum went, went to talk to Ibrahim, the cook. This is Ibrahim. He loved us so much. I don't know why. We were horrors. But he loved me and my brother so much. You know what he did? He took blame for it himself. He took blame for it. Subhanallah. This kind, sweet man. Stuck in my mind. He's Muslim and I, he's the guy I used to see praying. Subhanallah. Actions speak louder than words, brothers and sisters. And subhanallah, I could give you many examples. Brothers that I've, and I tell often brothers this. Or sisters, when we're having a discussion. I remember many years ago, I was having a discussion with someone. We were having a debate about Shia Sunni, Sunni Shia debate. So the brother was very, very insistent no, the Shia this and such and such. And I was saying, no, they're not, and you shouldn't say that, and they're Muslims, and such and such, and whatever. So he took me out to dinner, and he bought this Sheikh from Saudi. So he was going, the brother was going, go on, Sheikh, tell him, tell him, go on, Sheikh, tell him. Like this, okay? So the sheikh is just saying, Mustafa, calm down, calm down. So the sheikh starts, brother Abdurrahim, and so he says a few words. I'm before it, you know, I'm just saying, blah blah blah, this and that, this and that. He says, Yaqi, alhamdulillah, it's, it's no problem. Let's just enjoy our food. Subhanallah, I was so impressed with his adab, his akhlaq. I was so impressed. I thought, Subhanallah. You know when I read the Qur'an, and I read what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the believers, how they say peace to the ignorant, subhanAllah. I was so impressed that I thought, no, I, now I want to know what this guy has to say. I want to know what he has to say. I wish I had listened to him. Because I was so impressed with his manners. Actions speak louder than words, brothers and sisters. That is something that we have to understand. Let us be very careful about what we say. And alhamdulillah, let us also be careful about what we do. But let us concentrate our efforts, brothers and sisters, on worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in directing our attention to learning Allah, to learning His deen. Let us reduce this criticism of each other, this backbiting of each other. And I have to mention something. I feel I'm sorry. I have to mention this. I gave a talk yesterday. And some people seem to be confused about my talk. And of course, I was mentioning, as you know, who, those of you who listen to it. I was trying to point out the fact that Islam has encouraged and honored the woman as a mother and as an obedient wife. And I mentioned, and I stand by it, that it is very sad to see that some brothers and sisters have this attitude, we're going to have one or two kids. And that we're going to leave it at that. And then some information came to me today that there are some, almost immediately one sister started receiving criticism. Oh, you sister, you see you've just got two kids. Why are you having more? Yet this sister, this sister is doing something which no other sister can do. She is teaching tajweed. And the reason that she doesn't want to have more kids is because if she gets morning sickness and she's looking after the kids, she is not going to be able to teach tajweed. Are we talking, on, are we on the same planet here, brothers and sisters? I'm not quite sure. Because what we were talking about was being defeated by the mentality of the kuffar. Their mentality is that we have one or two kids, why? So we can enjoy the dunya. Because we as women don't want to be oppressed by that. But this is something from the deen. How did you get confused about what I was saying? And then I thought about it and I realized that what the real reason is, brothers and sisters, is this sickness in our heart that we've got. We love to talk a lot. We love to criticize others. We love to pick at their faults. 
But I wonder how those sisters who criticize that sister, I, I wonder how their actions are. I wonder what things they